All right, stocks are at record highs, and we are breaking down retail earnings with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, let's begin with Action Alerts Plus holding TJX. Yes, now this is one where we've been trimming and trimming. I wish I had sold some more at 80, but that's a woulda, shoulda, coulda. I had downgraded it to a two because we were very concerned about this particular quarter. It looks like we were right to be concerned, but what bothers me is, we uh, would have expected a better forecast because what TJ was going to be doing was buying all the JCPenney and Macy's liquidation product and then be able to sell it at a marked up price. Um, we are waiting more information. Uh, do, do you buy back the stock that you sold at 78? That's what we're trying to figure out. Obviously, you want everything to be Home Depot. This was not Home Depot. Well, what did you make of Home Depot? No, Home Depot first could be pulled down. I mean, it's. Retail's so bad that it's difficult because of the ETF. For everybody, ETF goes down or people short the ETF. Home Depot can be challenged by that. Even being long Home Depot and short ETF is going to, uh, that's the RTH, it's going to be a problem. Look, Home Depot, I think, is uniquely non-Amazonable. Now, it's funny because a lot of people were saying that this would be the quarter that you would see that they were Amazonable because Amazon has moved into tools. But right now, it still looks like that hasn't happened. Uh, I would uh, say that when people go to Home Depot, they, uh, a lot of them go for uh, plants, they go for things that are personal, they go for things that are difficult to return. Uh, and I think that, that Home Depot is still uh, in a special place, as is Costco. Costco, because they uh, give you that great deal with the, with the card. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I like to think that Home Depot is uh, head and shoulders above everybody. But I, I also know that the stock is run. I'm not saying sell Home Depot. I'm saying that this market is very fickle about all retailers. All right, and, and one more retailer, Dick's Sporting Goods. Yeah, Dick's is kind of surprising because last week they reported an accounting error. And at the same time, uh, they kind of said, don't worry. And what they were saying, I guess, in retrospect, was don't worry about the accounting, mm -hmm. but uh, you, you should worry about the business. A and they did guide down, and they were they missed their forecast. Uh, they missed their forecast uh, very big. Uh, they missed it like Macy's. So you see, and, and like J.C. Penney, when you miss your forecast that big, you really get taken to the woodshed. TJX did not miss its forecast as big as those, but of course, missing a forecast is in this environment where so many companies are not missing forecasts. You tend to see money just flow out of the zone. The retail sector is going to be smaller by the time we're done with this. All right. Also, Ford announcing some layoffs and cost cuts. Yeah, you know what? I, I think that Ford, Mark Fields is under pressure. The stock has been endlessly down since he came in. Uh, but the same way, you know, you could argue that about GM. I think the hidden thing that was in that that really intrigued me was the CTO came out and said, and it might have been a separate interview, that he's willing to do a deal with Waymo. Now, I spent some time in Silicon Valley with Ford where they're developing the, their autonomous car, which requires, you know, uh, millions of chips. And, 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 you know, to get it right, I mean, you have to put a lot of chips in a car. And what I think is interesting was that they said they might be willing to partner with Waymo. Waymo is with Fiat. Now, Waymo wants to be Switzerland. They are making their own chips. Uh, Waymo is Alphabet. And when I was in their car, now, the way you measure, and this is really important, the way you measure how a driverless car company is doing is you go to the California Motor Vehicles and you look for engagement. Engagement means how many times did they have to disengage or engage in order to be able to stay on the road. And Waymo has by far the best record. Ford does not. So if you can imagine, you have to get behind the wheel uh, too often with Ford versus what's going on with Waymo. So this is very positive for an actual nurse name, Alphabet. Uh, another actual artist named Western Digital, Eric Johnson, has it's a great, great piece because it is just, a, there's a lot of posturing. Now, I spoke to Western Digital the other day, and it's very clear that they do have, a, I, I think, a very good court case. Uh, and, and they also make it clear that arbitration, which is what they're asking for, is certainly within the realm to ask. What they don't really point out is that arbitration could take one to two years. Now, Toshiba is obviously in such bad shape that what I think Western Digital is saying is, listen, we can hold you up to the point where we'll bankrupt you unless you come to the table. Now, this is really hardball, and I'm sure if you're Toshiba, you hate these guys by now. Um, and it had been a good partnership. Um, obviously, Toshiba just wants to run an auction. What I think that Western Digital is doing here is making it so that fewer companies would want to be in the auction because they know that they'd be part of a lawsuit or that they'd be held up. 
And so it's a brilliant tactic by Western Digital. I don't know whether it can succeed, but Western Digital wants very much to be in. They need to find a partner, they need to make a bid. This needs to go away, it hasn't yet. All right, another action alert same Apple, which according to an SEC filing is Warren Buffett's third largest holding. Yeah, well you look, he loves it. And remember, he views it as a consumer product company, not unlike a Newell, not unlike a Procter. And it does sell at a lower multiple than they do. I mean, I think Newell, which we own for Action Alerts and is doing quite well, uh, is a very good analog. Remember, Warren Buffett, when he went into IBM, he went in and that was a tech company. Um, he has shifted uh, and is saying, listen, I was wrong about IBM, kind of going back to the idea that maybe he was, uh, that was not his forte. Um, but with Apple, he's saying, look, the loyalty is so great here that people want to own an Apple phone. And what's important about that is that's what Tim Cook told me when I visited him. Yes. He said, look, it's a consumer product and it's loved and we keep upgrading. He was talking about, maybe it's very funny because one of the things that Tim Cook was talking about is when he came up with the earbuds, which I gave my wife from Mother's Day, <laughs> when he came up with the earbuds, there were a lot of people who said, who would want these? Well, you know what? The demand for them is so great that they can't keep up. And why? Because people in the end don't want the the collared by the, uh, the strangle, they, you call right, it. the strangle, <laughs> and, and I think that that's again that's a consumer product innovation where these uh, great uh, technical gurus, tech gurus, are saying is he hasn't innovated. The consumer products people will be saying, oh my God, the guy innovates every iteration. So if you move the company over into consumer product and they can perhaps charge a thousand dollars for a new phone, what that says to me is you have the greatest consumer product goods company ever. Do you have the greatest tech company post Steve Jobs? I don't care. Mm. I love my device. I think we're, there's a false premise that you know somehow you want to measure Apple against uh, I, Netflix. I maybe you want to get against Amazon. They do that. I want to measure it against every other company that makes consumer products. It's the best consumer product company I've ever seen. <laughs> well, you mentioned Clorox in that interview with Tim Clark. Yeah, I mean, Clorox is a good company, but they and they innovate, but in the end, the innovation that comes with each iteration of the iPhone is rather extraordinary, and I don't know why Apple doesn't get more credit. All right, moving on, on Mad Dash, on Squawk in the Street, uh, you talked about Citigroup weighing in on Pfizer. Yeah, this is a curious piece. Um, they say that, listen, Pfizer probably has to buy Bristol-Myers or Allergan. Now, Allergan, I've been saying, and remember, there's a conference call tomorrow for members of Action Alert for the club at 11.30, where I am going to discuss the notion of what to do with Allergan. Um, Allergan doesn't go up. There have been a couple of hedge funds that liquidated Allergan. Here's a city note that, city note that basically says Pfizer has to buy either Bristol or Allergan. Now, Bristol would be horribly dilutive. Allergan wouldn't, and yet Allergan goes down anyway. Dave Tepper, uh, he he uh, sold the stock, he had been big in it. Um, I caution people that in the end, earnings matter more than what hedge funds do. Earnings matter more than City saying that maybe Pfizer will buy Allergan. But what I didn't like about the piece was, I mean, in terms of just being concerned about Pfizer, was that they did say that there's a lot, the pipeline's not as good as we thought, and the earnings are a little bit higher, you know, the estimates are too high. So Pfizer, which has been doing nothing during this period, as has Merck been doing nothing, um, a little, I'm a little more circumspect. Uh, you would expect in Pfizer, Bristol, Allergan, Lilly, the, uh, Merck, they're all just underperforming. And J&J uh, &J was up big on an upgrade the other day, but in general, uh, this has been a hard group to own versus owning Humana and, S and Cigna, United Health, which is my favorite in that group that I wish we hadn't sold for Action Alerts. Okay, moving back to retail a little bit on stop trading, you talked about Nike. Yeah, um, op you know, there's a, a piece this morning about, about whether Nike's going to make the quarter. And what I find fascinating is that Nike, this is the most prolonged period of underperformance for Nike I, I, I have seen. Now, the comment this morning from research was about how there's a, a, a dollar problem. Uh, and it's interesting because remember, the dollar hasn't been that strong. I believe in the euro. I think the euro is going up. Another theme for tomorrow at 1130 on my conference call. You really want to attend this thing or sign up for Action Alerts because it's going to be a very good call. But uh, I think that Nike is still being uh, hurt by, it, uh, by Adidas, which, you know, there isn't a retailer that doesn't talk about Adidas being very strong. Look at Kohl's. And being hurt by, uh, by, by uh, Under Armour. Now, I have a piece this morning on Real Money saying that under Armour's not getting any respect. It's all the way back to where it was when it reported that quarter that was conceived to be, that was perceived to be the bottom quarter. But apparel remains, shoes remain very challenged, apparel remains very challenged, don't want to be there. All right, so with that, what are you expecting from Target's results on Wednesday? You know, I've got to tell you, after listening to these calls, I mean, Target should be down more into the quarter. You know, it should be down more into the quarter. I, I don't know um, how Target 
Uh, look, anything's possible because now we've had a lot of stocks softened and there should be a lot of puts being bought on Target. But uh, it is hard to see how Target can maneuver because it doesn't have what Home Depot has. It's much more like a Kohl's, much more like a Nordstrom. It does have a good discount, discounting business. Um, but it's challenged. And, and I think that if I, I, I you know, I, I've got to tell you, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about Target. All right. And then Alibaba is out on Thursday. Alibaba has been a horse. Uh, I have liked Alibaba ever since delivering Alpha last year, which was the CNBC conference, where I got to drill them. I even used some questions from my old friend Herb Greenberg, and I just kept coming back with answers that I liked. And the stock is now up about 35 from that interview. But you remember, when they're good, like Amazon, they don't quit. So I think that Alibaba is going to be fine. Um, it, 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 could it go down? I mean, anything can go down when it's been straight up. But I think Alibaba's a good company. All right, and the last earnings we're watching, Cisco. Cisco yesterday moved up very big on a recommendation. I always like them when they don't go up big ahead. Cisco does, uh, what we want to hear from Cisco, we want to hear from Chuck Robbins is mm. that they are really making inroads in a soup to nuts offering for a cybersecurity. Um, because what's happened is, is that we know from that uh, WannaCry hack is that uh, we saw Proofpoint go up big. Proofpoint is a uh, email company. Uh, we saw Palo Alto go up. Palo Alto is a very big uh, enemy of Cisco. So we want to know whether Cisco's cybersecurity business is doing well. That's an area that Chuck has emphasized, and that could be one of the reasons why it might be good. All right, Jim, thank you so thank much. You. And we just want to remind everyone watching that you have a chance to meet Jim Cramer on May 23rd at an event at Bar San Miguel. But, Jim, space is filling up. Yeah, I mean, I think this time you, ha you have to move. Uh, um, we had a really good crowd. I worked there this weekend. It's just, uh, look, here's what's going on. Okay, it's a chance you watch the show, and then I'm going to talk about the show, the making of the show. And people have done that. I usually, uh, I've only had a few people ever so-called backstage. And this is one of those operations, this is one of those opportunities. And of course, we'll take pictures with everybody, which I know people like. I've done, I do one or two live shows a year uh, at, this, at, at, at CNBC. This will be kind of like that. And we'll be informal. We'll talk about stocks. We'll talk about some of the stocks that, that are owned or that I like. But I want people to join the club by going to this dinner. And it's a great way to become a member. All right, it's a fantastic Thank event, you. and click the not link. a lot of seats left, and I'm not trying to stampede. <laughs> I just know because I look at the numbers every day. Yeah. Move fast, everyone. <laughs> All right, Jim Kramer, thank, thank you, you so much. And for more on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.